Okay, pop quiz. Aside from being incredibly dark, what do all of these diamond grids have in common? The answer in the back of the book is that each one is alone in the universe. And it's because the hard cell three grid, the matrix, is fragile. And the diamond is gathered around one root, and if another one comes in and they interact, that's bad. So I did some work on it this week. Take a look at how that went. So power is off for reasons I'm not sure of. The grid is still running on the UPS. Camera is still shooting. Laptop still on battery. Fans are out. So these are going to start heating up. Oh man, so why does it matter that we have uh, uh, multiple cells on it? Because to remind ourselves of the master plan. Even if we start out with only one diamond grid in the universe, the whole point of this pr process is we end up with two. So we've got to have some way that when we've got multiple ones that they can avoid crashing into each other, avoid interfering. So that's what I was trying to work on with the border foam. I went through several iterations of it. We saw three of them there. The uh, the one that uh, actually got killed by the power outage, the UPS ran out of juice and we grid died. Uh, that one actually hadn't messed up, but these things are messing up all over the place because it, it's hard. Making a cell membrane, a cell wall is hard. It's got a bunch of different, often conflicting categories, uh, properties that we want it to have. And, and, you know, I came across this, you know, this is a, a 3D um, electron microscope or something. I don't even know how they do this, of an actual cell membrane. It's super tiny. Uh, those little balls over there are the uh, cavioli, the little holes. This, this raspberry strawberry thing in the middle is the clathrin cage. That's, you know, a bunch of molecules that are put together just for the purpose of transporting something else through the membrane. You know, it's unbelievably complicated because it's got to do, on the one hand, it has to resist outside stuff, but on the other hand, it has to be open to allow inf influences to come in selectively. And in the case of uh, the T2 tile, the whole thing has to move as well. Uh, uh, so we can do it and, you know, all right. So I started working on it and uh, 
it's still got a few bugs in the system. So this is the title card for uh, this update. Uh, cell walls uh, are hard to be soft. It takes a lot of work. A and you know this, uh, the, these guys crashing into each other. This is in the simulator, but it's a lot like uh, what we just saw in the opening video as well. And you know I went through this over and over and over again this week, so it's like. <sighs> you know, <laughs> this is driving me crazy. Uh, but, you know, I have to say, yeah, it's fun. I'm having fun. <laughs> but it is progress. Uh, uh, all right. So the artificial life development challenge uh, uh, I had been expressing it in terms of days it was 180 days when it started but I've now re-expressed it in terms of T Tuesday updates like this one and when you work out the dates this is T minus uh, 10 uh, here's the entire chart chart going uh, from today down to January 3rd uh, January 2nd uh, um, when we're gonna uh, see uh, the uh, code running, which creates copies, and then those copies using the code running will create copies and we'll have grandchildren of the ancestor. So what we were seeing today, well, what we will see, we'll see some stuff about the loops. Uh, uh, actually, the foam stuff, the, the, the cell wall stuff, that was borders. That was actually supposed to come in August, but I switched to it a little bit early because it, the, the loop stuff was driving me crazy, although I did go back to it. So T minus 10. It'll be over before we know it. Uh, um, here, uh, where we are for today, uh, um, these were our tasks, uh, code segments, the loops, uh, the chain, the chain segments that could act as instructions. They can act as instructions, but we haven't actually built any instructions yet. That's still to come. And then the loop spikes to actually be able to make uh, one of these chains that forms a loop. Uh, that was the subject I spent a ton of time on. The SFI review, oh, I made some progress, but I still didn't ship it. That is now priority number one going forward. Have some fun. Depending on how you define fun, I guess I did okay. Okay, so to remind us, the whole thing about loops that was uh, supposed to be on it here. Uh, so what is it? The idea is, you know, a, a loop laid out in space so that we can do loopy things with it. How are we going to do it? We're going to use it by having special atoms that are going to represent the uh, the segments, the links of the loop uh, uh, that are going to be laid out, not actually a circle, just any kind of closed path in the pockets of the HC3 matrix. Uh, um, and why are we doing this? Well, you know, many purposes, but the main one I like is, you know, to represent a loop in programming, you know, in programming, when we learn how to do programming, it's always, you know, you go step by step. And sequential programming is really valuable, really powerful, because, you know, each step takes place at the same place. Uh, we get to use the same hardware over and over. Now I'm doing this, now I'm doing this. And if we can actually complete it in a loop and, and have something that comes out of it, then we can multiply our gains by just running the loop over and over again and stacking up the results. How are we going to do it in the T2 tile project? We're going to have a single seed, a seed loop is what I'm calling it at the moment, that's going to pop out and make the minimal loop, which in our case is two atoms that are both upstream and downstream of each other. So they're up and the down from this guy points that way, the up and down from the other one point that way. So it's a little two atom loop. And one of those atoms is going to be this special thing saying, please grow the loop. And that's what I was working on. The reason it's a challenge is because, you know, we have this big event window, 41 sites that we can change everything all in one time. And that's great. But when we're doing it on the HC3 and we're saying neighboring pockets, one segment of the loop per pocket within the HC3 matrix. Uh, um, you can't do it all at once. You can't reach it all at once. You have to do multiple steps at it, and it got very complicated. Let's look at a quick demo uh, um, in the simulator. Okay, so here we are. Uh, uh, let me see. I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm turning on the event tracking, uh, which is particularly useful. And I'll make a, all right, there is a seed small diamond. So it takes a little while to actually grow the <laughs> debugging setup because, you know, step one, we have to let the HC3 grid expand and get out there and do stuff. Uh, um, so that's going to go. And here we've got the, uh, the, the seed is still there. It's basically waiting on a timer, counting events uh, um, until it gets to 25 or something like that. And it's going to pop out. All right. So now it popped out a seed loop which is just wandering around and the seed loop is very silly. It doesn't actually respect the pocket structure because I didn't code it to. Uh, uh, but once it finds enough empty space, uh, uh, which should be quite quick. Uh, no, that's not it. There you go. All right, bam. So when it happened, it was all really quick. 
So that, this is the uh, advantage of having the uh, event tracing running, is that we can now go back in time and watch what happened. Uh, uh, all right, so now, so there it is. So the first thing that happens um, is, where is it? All right, there we go. So the seed loop finally finds a fertile spot and it pops out and it makes a uh, new grow in you. I, I hate naming classes like new or modern or anything like that because of course they, it goes wrong almost immediately, but I did it because this is like my fourth attempt just in since the last T-Tuesday update to come at this in various different ways. So this is the new grow approach. And over here we've got one of the demos. This is actually the same class that what we were doing with the worms that were zooming all around in the other demos. Uh, um, and But this one is special because it's gonna try to build a box. It's, and let's see what happens. Uh, uh, point. All right, the demo moves around because that's what demos do. Okay, so now the new grow is going to get an event, and it pops out a, uh, a new corner. So what it's going to do, it's going to go from here over to here, down to here, and then come back to here and try to hook up that entire ch chain. And it might not to, you know, something could be, uh, there, there could be things clogging it up, uh, uh, but in this case it actually worked because we've already seen it. So eventually the, uh, right, the demo uh, diffuses around some more, the new grow diffuses around some more, all within their pocket. Uh, um, but eventually the NC, where is it? It's gonna have to get an event. Uh, uh, see now the other thing we have we have the the HC three grid uh, is is still growing out or all around us. Oh, this is getting boring. Uh, all right, there we go. I'll back it up. Uh, uh, and all right, so there it is. So the corner gets an event and it pops out a side, and that now gives us a path from the grow to the corner to the side and back to the uh, demo where we can grow the loop. We can make it, we go from just two elements of the loop to one, two, three, four, we can add two. And, and that's in fact what happens. So when the NS, when the uh, new side uh, gets an event, up oh, there it was, it did it. Uh, um, it Oh, oh, no, no, uh, actually, uh, I got it wrong. The new side had actually done its work already, and we were waiting for the corner to notice that the side had done its work. And when it did, the, the corner got the event. You know, we can tell because we've got this, this green uh, event window around the whole thing. It re, uh, relabels everybody. So now this one is actually the original demo that we had, and we've got one more temporary things moving up and down. And as we let it go forward, now, uh, actually, the, yeah, we'll just jump ahead to the future. All right. Uh, uh, so now, in fact, the uh, those are updating around and around in a circle in a little for loop. Yay. Uh, uh, now, there's a bunch of reasons why this is actually not going to work perfectly. Uh, 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 a lot of robustness that isn't there. Uh, I'll go through it more in the live stream if anybody cares. So. That's the progress. Uh, um, in other news, uh, um, I have picked uh, uh, a first book to publish. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'll talk about it a little bit when a little bit further down the road, but, but here's the teaser. I didn't write it. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Also, uh, uh, in the process of all of this code development lately, you've turned up some, some issues, some little bugs in Ulam 5. Uh, Elena has now fixed them. So uh, we're going to push out a minor release, you know, 5.0.1 or whatever the next one is. I don't care about the exact numbers. So that'll be coming up soon. And, and that's it. So the next uh, update will be on August 2nd. Uh, uh, the goals are, number one, get the chain loops to grow beyond four links. Right now it starts out as two, grows to four, and then can't go any further. We want to go any further. We want to build the cell wall to do, do better than having the uh, uh, ships crash in the middle of the night. Uh, I'd like to refresh the OBS workflow in the in particular because it's it's still taking me too much time to get this stuff set up, and I would like to be able to do more video clips and, and get in and out of them stuff. So it's, it's just you know I've I've learned a little bit about OBS at this point. I need to do some work to smooth everything out and and indeed to have some fun. So I hope to see you next time.